with BlackRain79.com. I'm back here with another video for you guys. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, how to play Ace King at the Micros. So, uh, it's a question I get asked about a lot. Uh, unsurprisingly, it's it's because it's a, it's a really difficult spot, you know, especially when you don't hit the flop. It's something I've struggled with a lot over the years. Is trying to understand uh, how to how to play a missed ace king against these donkeys at stakes like this, like at uh, NL two here, one cent, two cent. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a, a surefire fix for you guys. It's what I always say when people email me about this. There's no, you can't. If somebody's just not going to fold, there's nothing you can do, you know. But you can try to save the least. You can try to perhaps bluff in it. In, in a certain spot where you think it's possible you'll get the, you know, maybe they'll fold. Um, but for the most part, you know, um, you just got to be patient at these six. So I've lined up six different uh, hands here. Um, I think they're all in NL2, and uh, three of them we hit the flop or we hit we hit the board eventually in the hand. And the other three we completely basically whiff the flop. So um, you can, you can kind of see the difference of how I play them. I think it's probably, you know, the ones you'd be interested in are probably the ones where we don't hit, but uh, uh, I think that uh, there'll be instructional value in all three of them, or uh, all six of them, I should say. So, uh, first hand here, um, ace-king, of course, ace-king suited. So, so I'm playing uh, shorthanded here. It should be noted um, that the massive fish, actually, I mean, they're both bad players, but... Uh, the really massive fish is to my left here. He's a 44-0-1. Um, I like to play a lot of shorthanded like this because this is where the mega fish hang out, and uh, you know it's just easy money, of course, right? So, uh, so we raise it up. I do go for the overraise a little bit there. Anybody who's read my first book, Crushing the Micros, knows that uh, or Crushing the Micro Stakes, I should say, um, knows that uh, I do recommend. Um, over raises a little bit, uh, but only when you're playing against uh, really bad players, you know, and, and clearly we have one here, 44-0, a com huge drooler fish. Um, you know, if the table was all nits, if it was all like 10 eights everywhere, um, I would not make it 12 cents to go because these people are going to be smart enough to not call a raise uh, with something silly versus that, but then again, of course, I would never actually be playing at a table full of all 10 eights because that's a waste of my time. We don't play this game, uh, or you shouldn't be playing this game to play against a table full of 10 eights. Uh, when I say 10 eight, I mean uh, 10 is the VPIP percentage of hands they play, and uh, the eight would be the PFR or the percentage of hands they raise with. Obviously, an extremely tight player. If they're only playing 10% of hands, we clearly want to play against guys like this who are playing 44%. Anyways, let's get on to this uh, here. So I've made a slight overraise. I've made it uh, six times the blind to go. Of course, the huge fish calls. And uh, the other, uh, what I would call a semi loose passive player, he decides to fold in the big line. Um, so we actually, we did not actually hit the flop here. Um, so the, uh, the huge fish, he checks to us. And we do actually decide to bet here, which is, I, I think it's fine, uh, against one player. Uh, that's another thing you're going to see in, the, in these uh, six hands, is, is how I play differently uh, with one player versus multiple players. There's only one opponent in this hand. Uh, we are also in position in this hand. It's something extremely important to point out. Um, well, I mean, I should say that I would probably make the C bet against one person here, whether in position or out of position. Uh, but th it just always makes things better when we're in position. We, he's already checked to us which gives us some information that uh, there's a decent chance he's weak. So uh, so we do make the uh, the bet, and he decides to call. Now, we pick up a nice runner on the turn. It doesn't actually improve our hand, of course, but it you know gives us a draw to the nuts. He checks to us again. What should we do here? We should check behind. This is not a spot where you want to be double barreling. Uh, you got to understand, a player like this is not going to fold. If he's got, like, jack-10 here or something like that, um, he's going to call the whole way. It doesn't matter what you bet. And the thing is, is that, yes, we have a huge draw. We've also got our six outs with our overs as well. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty sure Jack, I mean, Jack 10 definitely is still a favorite versus that hand with, uh, uh, versus our hand uh, with one card to come. So do you want to put in money when you're the underdog? No, of course not. So just check back here, uh, see if we can hit our card and just control the size of the pot. Um, and look at that. We run good, right? So, um, so he comes out with the uh, idiot bet. I don't know what you would call that. <laughs> the two cents, it's its nothing. It's a meaningless bet, of course. It's what fish do. Um, as I've also talked about in 
<clears throat> on my blog and in my first book. Um, a good plan here is just to sometimes just go all in. Is I, I've found uh, I've had a lot of success at uh, um, at these stakes, just going all in against a terrible player like this. Like I said, I would never do this against a reg. This is only against a huge fish like this. Uh, because they'll just they'll think that you're bluffing somehow. I mean, if it's if it's somewhat of a coordinated board, it's possible you hit a straight here somehow. Um, it's possible he has a two pair on this, and and they're just no way on earth they're gonna fold that. So I do in fact just go for the huge overshove, um, and he decides to call off 150 big blinds, and uh, of course we got the best hand possible, and he shows pocket sevens. Wow. Okay cool stuff. Let's move on to the next hand here. So I think this is probably another hand where we hit. So I do go for the overraise here again. Once again, you can see that there is a huge fish to my right. Uh, there's also a huge fish to my left. There's also another huge fish in the in the small blind. You know, the games really suck these days, guys. It's it's so hard to hard to beat these guys, you know. So we hit, obviously, makes things a lot easier. You're only going to hit one out of three times with Ace-King, but uh, it's always nice to see that Ace or that King uh, pop out on the door there on the flop. So we get it. we're in the pot with two huge fish, okay? So the first one is already checked to us. What do we do? Bet pot. You guys probably know that. If you've followed my blog, my, anything that I've uh, talked about over the years, just bet pot against these guys. Don't screw around. They're gonna if they got some some part of the board, they're going to call. Simple as that. So uh, we got one call from uh, the fish to our left, and he's only got a pot size bet left here. Um, so what do we do? Just stick him. Just just put him in. There's no reason to screw around. Once again, there's don't bet sixty cents or some nonsense here. Just put him in. If he's got a piece, he's going to call. If he's got uh, five six for the straight draw, if he's got any ace, uh, we beat obviously almost all of them. Um, if he's got, God, who knows? I mean, he might call with King Seven. <laughs> who knows? Just put him in. Don't waste. Don't don't screw around versus these guys. He's gonna call if he's got something. And that's actually a massive cooler for a fish. You know, there's no end. He wouldn't fold fold that. Uh, you know, if we uh, uh, bet his his uh, his first child's uh, education fund, he wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be folding. So, um, so that works out well. You know, get all the money in. Like I talked about in the previous videos couple months back about getting the max value always at these stakes do not ever leave any money on the table if 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 in a spot if you're in spots like this and you see and you go to a showdown and that fish has any money you've you've absolutely you know you've butchered the hand for an old two you have to stack them every single time here you cannot allow them you have to get max value uh from your hands all the time at these stakes because you know these situations don't come up that often and um these guys want to call. You guys all know that. That's what these guys love to do. So when you have a huge hand, make sure they pay every single time. All right, last one here where we got kind of value. So we go for the overraise again. There must be a fish. Yes, there is. Uh, in the small blind, a ridiculous fish, of course. Um, so, um, yeah, he, he's the one calling, of course. And once again, we hit top pair. Makes things super easy. Once again, I always say, uh, look at the stack size first. Um, before you look at any stats. Uh, changes the complexion of the hand completely. Uh, we're not going to be folding anyway. Even if you had a full stack, it doesn't really make any difference. We got top pair, top kicker on a uh, really kind of totally uncoordinated uh, dry board versus a player who can pretty much have anything. So we're going to be putting all the money in. We're going to be going bet, bet, shove anyways, but, you know, against a half stack, essentially. It's, it's just totally trivial so uh, I actually go for a slight over bet here which is fine I've talked about that before if they're not gonna fold to a pot size bet make it bet 120 percent of the pot you know whatever you know don't you know just always remember this is no limit hold em. you don't don't listen to people who say oh you need to bet 60 percent here so no you, you change especially at these stakes when you're playing against complete morons like this you can bet whatever you want if you think he's gonna call 30 cents here then make it 30 cents. Why would you make it 15? Um, it just allows you to get more money in the pot when you're, you know, almost certainly the favorite. So uh, he calls, we get a meaningless card on the turn, and you guys know what to do here is just put him in, which is exactly what we do. He calls, and he shows up with the jack eight, so we can ship that one too. Okay, let's get on to the final uh, couple of hands here. So we got Ace King in the uh, in the small blind here. <clears throat> 
excuse me, a bunch of limpers. Um, typical NL2, of course, tons of limpers everywhere here. Um, so as you guys probably know, we should isolate big here and we need to add, you know, we don't want to make it just eight cents here. We want to make it like 18 or 20 cents or something. You need to add a bunch more big blinds for all of the, uh, the limpers and you want to add a little bit, you know, a big blind or two because we're out of position as well. So I would typically, uh, I'm assuming maybe 20 cents here or something. Yep. That's what I make it. Uh, so we do get one call from the huge fish, and we've got a huge net here. Um, and he actually makes the call as well, which is obviously pretty interesting. I guess he's trying to set mine for a quarter of his stack with pocket threes or something. Who knows? Is then L2? You never know what's going to go, what's going to happen. Okay, so we are out of position versus two players, both of which do not have much of a stack, and we've completely whiffed on the flop. Um, we also sh should note that this is a flop where, you know, ask yourself, I mean, the knit has a pot size bet. Ask yourself, is, it, is he ever going to fold like pocket eights on this board? Because it's also like it's a non-scary board, right? Like if it was queen 10, uh, I don't know, um, yeah, like Queen ten nine or something, maybe pocket ace would fold, right? Um, but queen four four, I mean, it's like it's either we have the queen or we don't, basically. And uh, you know, obviously the fish is going to be thinking that way as well. So, what do we do here? We go for the check. <laughs> we don't try to. I think this is where a lot of people throw away money is they try to. They're like, oh, I got to at least take a stab at it. No, you don't. If you don't think you're going to get a fold in this spot, which I don't, then just give up. You know, just we made our big bet preflop, but just because we put in 20 cents preflop, it does not mean that we need to spend, you know, put another penny in the pot uh, after the flop. Uh, same thing on the turn. I'm in just give up mode. Now, of course, the fish bets something retarded, giving us 7.6 to 1, as you can see here on the pot. Uh, I'm not going to be folding when I'm getting 7.6 to 1 with literally any hand, of course, so I do call. Uh, just hoping to hit an ace or a king, or I guess... Um, a queen maybe would, you know, maybe I'd win a, um, win a chop or something like that. Um, but whatever, I'm just not going to fold when it's 7.6 to 1. Um, and then he goes for the pot on the end and just clearly just folds. So, I mean, again, you know, it's, uh, I'm not wasting my, I'm not wasting uh, a C bet here. Um, you know, uh, p you know, people are always asking me, what do you do when you miss the flop? Well, a lot of times this is, this is what I'm doing, you know? Um, you know, find places, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't waste a C bet if you don't need to, you know, especially against multiple players. That's, that's a big thing as well. Against one player, things can be a little bit different, but, uh, uh let's move on to the next hand here. Um, so we got a, uh, a raise to three times the blind from a, uh, a laggish player, laggy kind of player, uh, under the gun. Uh, we got a call from a, a sort of bad reg knit type passive kind of player. Uh, huge fish, of course, has got to make it the call <laughs> in the small blind. We got ace king, so we go for the big uh, six times uh, three bets. Uh, as you know, I've talked about many times about how it's okay to oversize your three bets at these stakes as well, especially when you got a huge hand. Um, and we managed to still get two calls, and that's why I don't mind just oversizing them because uh, they're going to call anything. We've got one of the best hands in poker, but unfortunately, we missed the flop. Um, so what do we do here? Once again, we're against two players, which changes things pretty considerably. Um, against one player, I would definitely be looking to take a stab here, but against two players, I do indeed just go for the check. Um, so the kind of drooler fish, he bets out here for a little bit more of a well, it's not a, I mean, it's still a, a fish bet, but, you know, we're not getting seven and a half to one this time. We're getting uh, 4.8 to one. Um, what do I decide to do? I decide to simply fold. Um, you know, it's borderline. The thing is, there's also a guy behind us. You know, the thing is, you never really want to be calling when there's a, I mean, this guy, you know, I mean, what if he's, you know, sandbagging something, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, if he has pocket sevens or pocket eights or something, he's not going to fold there. I wouldn't fold there. Right? But uh, um, so that definitely played a little bit of a factor into the fold in, in this spot here. But but overall, it's just about not putting in 
a lot more money post flop when you've missed with ace king. Ace king is a great hand, but you know when it doesn't hit the flop, you know you've, you know if the guy's got you know nine three offsuit. If this fish has got nine three offsuit, he's a massive favorite against us. I don't know if even when we're getting uh, you know four and a half to one or five to one there, um, if we're actually even um, mathematically correct to call there. So you know. Just playing at Koi uh, post flop here, as you guys can see, it's not really that sexy or anything. Uh, I think a lot of people want to know some sort of, you know, uh, fancy play that you can make or something. But as I said at the start of this video, a lot of times it's just understanding that against these these terrible calling stations, that these stakes, there's nothing you can do. You can't you can't do anything to make them fold. You know. Um, so a lot of times it's just giving up. So we got the huge limp pot once again. So you know we're going to make it like 16, 18 or something like that here. Uh, because of all the limpers. Plus we're out of position. Um, so we ended up getting one call. Which is kind of a... That's a weird player type. It's kind of lag. I guess you'd call it a lag. Uh, a 6% aggression factor is quite high. Although it is only 39 hands. Um... So, once again, we're against one player here. It changes things a little bit. Um, we're out of position here. So we do indeed go for the C-bet in this spot, which I think is fine against one player. Also note that he has kind of a small stack size. Um, it's a fairly dry board. You know, it's it's tough. Um, you know, there's a lot of hands that you can have that I think have missed here. All those Broadway hands is queen-jack. King-jack, king-queen, all that stuff should fold uh, on this board. So... We're also only betting half the pot, um, and this has a little bit to do with the stack size, but also uh, just in a big pot like this, you don't need to bet, you know, a large amount, you know. Um, as I've talked about many times before in my blog books and stuff like that, is you don't need to bet a huge amount either um, against these kind of players when you're just, you just want the fold, you know. Uh, you can really just structure your uh, your bet sizes uh, depending on uh, whether, you know, on just according to the strength of your hand. <laughs> a lot of times at uh, at uh, at NL at levels like this at NL two, when you're playing against players who are just you know they're not not really uh, thinking about the game on on any kind of level at all. Um, so we do make the bet uh, the C bet, and he decides to go for the mini raise. Now, as we can see, he only has a tiny bit left, so we pretty much don't really have any fold equity by coming over the top. He's probably going to call anything, um, and of course, we don't have any hand, so. Uh, again, it'd be a huge mistake here to continue on, uh, whether it's a call or a raise, uh, because we have nothing, we're out of position, and he's not folding anything. So we do and in, do indeed decide to just go ahead and make the fold. So that's all I got for you guys here. I hope this video was useful for you guys. Um, I do plan on making lots more of these, so make sure you are subscribed to this channel so that you get my uh, new updates on my videos uh, check out my website blackrain79.com I'm putting out new strategy articles uh, mental game uh, articles stuff like that um, all about microstakes poker pretty much every single week and uh, I will see you guys in the next video thanks a lot for watching